Today I want to tell you about a little bit of an issue that I came across with my 3D printers and I think it's actually one of the main reasons for failed prints that nobody in the community really talks about. So I've often heard about people complaining about clogged nozzles and personally I never had any issues with clogged nozzles. So it got me thinking, what are these people doing differently that I'm not doing? In the process of traveling with these 3D printers and using them on the road, I think I figured it out. So it all started when I was filming an episode of this K1C and I was in a stream or a river and I dropped my filament into a puddle of mud. So I rinsed off the mud as best I could in the stream that I was working in there and put it back on the 3D printer and started the print up and everything was working fine. Until about 30 minutes into the print, I started getting a clogged nozzle, the filament wasn't coming out properly and it caused some really weak and failed parts. It was actually this spool of ABS right here. After taking it out and inspecting it, I noticed there was tiny little dots of dust or debris that I picked up from the river. This is an actual spool of filament from this makerspace that's just kind of been sitting out. You can see all these tiny little dust particles. And let's take a look under the microscope as well to see if we can see anything else. Link Micro sent me this microscope to check out and it's really nice because I can record things in 4K so I'm getting a little bit better resolution and I can see finer details and share that with you all on YouTube. And also it can record audio. Having some scratch audio on this device will make it easier to synchronize all of my audio and video together. So, you know, it's just a really convenient thing to have. But enough about the microscope. Let's take a look at this filament and get some extreme close-ups on what the dust and debris on your filament looks like and how that compares to a typical 3D printer nozzle. So right away you can see these dust particles. They look absolutely massive at this magnification, but let's even get a little bit closer to see what they look like uh, very close up. So under extreme magnification you can see what this dust looks like. It looks like a bunch of dots of poop or kind of wood fibers. Maybe the wooden floor that forms the ceiling of the hacker space is shedding some wood particles. I don't know if that's just from it being an old building and the wood kind of falling apart or if that's some kind of bug poop. In any case, it's kind of gross. It could also just be dirt from people walking around outside that gets caught in between the planks of wood and then as things get worked loose, they fall through the ceiling and onto the filament in the floor below. But there's all sorts of gross looking stuff in here. Maybe there's like little bug mite parts as well. So this could be anything from dust and dirt to particles that are shed off of fabrics and clothing to human hair. And the thing about all of these materials is they're gonna have a much higher melting point than the filament that you're extruding. So instead of melting and flowing through the nozzle, it's going to be able to get caught up and clog parts of the nozzle, particularly the tip of the nozzle is going to be where it's most likely to cause a clog. You can imagine if you had a bunch of these fibrous particles in there, eventually they'd form a little mesh or a net that's going to shut off the tip of the nozzle. Now I'm going to keep the magnification exactly the same. You can see the framing of this shot basically fills the vertical height of this video with the diameter of a piece of filament, so about 1.75 millimeters. I also have this filament sample, which I just kind of rubbed around on the floor to see if it would pick anything up. And you can imagine if you dropped your filament on the floor or in the dirt or anywhere really, left it sitting on your couch or something, it could pick up a bunch of particles and we'll see what that kind of looks like under the microscope. And yeah, there, right there. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like a piece of jerky or something. Maybe it's a crumbled up leaf. It is around fall time. So maybe there's a crunched up leaf that got on here. And leaves are going to have a higher melting point than plastic. So something like that could easily clog the nozzle. Let's just look at some random spots on this filament and see what we can see. Yeah, even though this looks clean to the naked eye, you can see there's all sorts of little pieces of debris on here. Looks like there's sawdust. Um, probably a bunch of pieces of human skin. Let's take a look at an actual 3D printer nozzle and see what the size comparison is. So the magnification should be identical here since we're not changing the focal point. 
And here you can see this is the diameter of the nozzle. And it looks like there's already some stuff in this one. Maybe that's some kind of polishing compound or something. But you can easily see how something in the order of magnitude of size of the dust particles we were seeing on the filament could clog this nozzle tip. Because at the same magnification, basically those fibers can bridge the entire uh, width of the nozzle. So it seems like the number one failure case for 3D printers is clogged nozzles, and that all comes from the filament. The filament captures little particles of dust and over time that gets fed into the extruder, into the hot end, and then all those little dust particles eventually form a clog in the tip of the nozzle. Well, the way to resolve a clogged nozzle is usually to do a cold pull where you heat up the nozzle, manually feed some filament in there, heat it up and melt it, get it to just the right temperature and pull it out, and it should pull out all of the contaminants with it and after doing that, the printer was running just fine. But after a couple more prints, I started noticing some under extrusion and I wasn't getting as good of layer adhesion and eventually the nozzle just clogged shut again where it wasn't extruding any material. So I think what was happening there is there was debris still left in the nozzle and just over the course of time, eventually it, those pieces of debris on the sides of the nozzles worked their way into the tip and clogged the nozzle again. And I was just about to film this comparison video between the X1C and the K1C when that nozzle shut off completely and I wasn't able to start a print or change the filament on this machine. So I think it really is that simple. The number one reason for failed prints is clogged nozzles and the number one cause of clogged nozzles is debris on the filament. Some steps you can do to make this less of an issue is use some sort of device that encloses your filament in the case of this Bamboo Lab AMS, that does a great job of keeping the dust away. Another way around this is to use a larger diameter nozzle. So it's pretty standard for people to use 0.4 millimeter nozzles. But I think upgrading to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, in addition to having some speed and flow benefits, should be hugely beneficial in preventing nozzle clogs because it'll take longer for that nozzle to clog up. Just the number of particles required to completely shut it off will be larger. And additionally, it'll just pass through a lot of the potential clog sources. I'm thinking that the reason why I've never had an issue with this before is because I have a relatively clean workspace. Despite all of the random clutter, there's very little dust, and I always use a HEPA filter in my printing environment to keep dust out of the air. So the air is very clean, and despite me having open spools of filament, I don't have issues with dust settling on there and causing issues that way. So that's just a little insight that I've gained over the course of the last month where I've been traveling and printing in less than cleanly environments. If you have your printer set up in a garage or someplace where there's a lot of dust, like this level one hacker space that I'm currently working in, a lot of dust comes down from the ceilings. Just take a look at my bag here. This is from me setting the bag down once and it's picked up all this dust. It's kind of an issue in this workspace. So in a situation like this, you're definitely gonna wanna have something like this AMS unit that has a full enclosure for your filament that'll keep dust away from everything. And this also has a lot of downstream effects. If a printer doesn't have the best heat break, experiencing a nozzle clog can cause that heat break to fail where the filament will just be sitting in one spot for a long time, the filament wheels will be grinding and not feeding properly, and eventually heat creep will work its way up and seize up the plastic inside of the heat sink which then cools off and then forms like a plug above the heat break where it can't push the filament through even after you've replaced the nozzle. In the case of this Creality K1C, they've moved over to their unicorn style nozzle, which has the heat break integrated into the nozzle assembly. So let's say you had a clog that caused it to sit at high temperatures for a long period of time, then you had heat creep. Well, when you remove and replace that nozzle, that'll take out that entire heat break and you'll basically throwing the clog away. Same with the Bamboo Lab X1C. They have the heat sink, heat break, and nozzle all in one assembly. So you just unscrew it, take that out, throw it away, and replace it, and you completely get rid of the problem. On older designs that had the nozzle separate from the heat break and the heat sink, you could run into an issue where the nozzle clogs, and it's like, okay, well, I'll just replace the nozzle. You put the new nozzle in there, and then you try to print again, 
but due to a failed print that could have been like 12 hours long, the extruder was trying to push filament in there for a long period of time, but it was just sitting stationary at temperature. The heat will eventually work its way up that filament and into the heat sink area where it melts it a little bit, and then it solidifies and causes a somewhat permanent clog, which can only be removed by doing some special procedures like heating up the actual heat break and then force feeding it through but that's never ideal. You never want to be in that situation. Also, when you have the hot end, the heat sink, and the nozzle all separate as independent parts, like in older styles of Ender 3s and older printers in general, you can run into the issue where you experience a nozzle clog, which causes a large buildup of pressure in the heater block, which then squeezes the filament out and causes the blob of death failure situation where it basically extrudes a bunch of molten plastic out inside of the print head shroud and you just get this blob of molten material that solidifies into a giant block and you basically have to replace the entire hot end. That's much less likely to happen with these newer designs. The Prusa MK4, the Creality printers, the Bamboo Lab printers, they've all moved to this newer style that has the monolithic nozzle and heat break and in the case of the Bamboo Lab, they also have the heat sink attached to it up there. So we've had some advancements in 3D printing that make this less of an issue. However, you're always gonna wanna keep your filament clean, especially in less cleanly environments. So again, your solutions here are to keep your filament clean, make sure that you're not leaving it out in any dirty or contaminated environments. Keep it inside of a sealed enclosure like this, whether that's an AMS or whatever type of filament box you wanna use. Even a cardboard box should work fine. Just keep those dust particles off of the filament so they can't be fed into the 3D printer. You can also use a filament scrubber. So they sell these little devices that you can clamp over your filament and it'll pull it through a little sponge and clean it off as you're printing. That could help deal with some amount of dust. However, it's not ideal because you'd need to be replacing those and making sure that it's clean. You can use a larger nozzle to help pass those filament clogs more easily where they'll just get ejected out of the nozzle. 0.4 millimeters is really small, so you know that's somewhat easy to clog. And if you wanna avoid these issues altogether, you can use today's sponsor, JLC 3DP, to do your printing for you. And that way, if there's any nozzle clogs, they'll figure that out and ship you your completed parts without having any issues. With JLC 3DP, you can print with a variety of different print processes, whether that's FDM, SLA, SLS, you know, you can get parts made out of metal. So it's just a bunch of really good options. And with JLC's other services, you can also make PCBs and CNC machined parts. So big thanks to JLC 3DP for sponsoring this episode. And uh, yeah, what are the takeaways here? So the takeaway to me is if you ever drop your filament or get it dirty somehow, it's gonna be much better to just throw that away instead of risking it and risking a nozzle clog because in the best case, it'll completely clog the nozzle and you'll know you'll have a problem. In the worst case, it can constrict the nozzle and cause under extrusion, which will give you really weak parts and you might not even notice it. If you have contaminated filament, it's gonna be much easier for you to just replace that spool. Just pull that sucker out of rotation and open a new pack of filament. It's only about $12 to get a brand new one kilogram spool of PLA online. So just buy that and you'll prevent yourself from having issues with your 3D printer that might require more replacement parts and more extensive repair. Doing a nozzle change is a process that takes some time. It's just annoying to have to deal with that stuff and it's gonna be much better to just replace the filament. Now what you could do instead of throwing this type of filament away is put it in a contaminated box and that'll be filament that you know might have some kind of debris on it and just run that in your larger diameter nozzle printers. I recommend always having one of your printers to have a larger nozzle diameter. So one millimeter, 1.8 millimeters, 2.4 millimeters, just something really wide that'll pass whatever filament you send at it through the nozzle. That way you can use your contaminated filament without having to worry about nozzle clogs and you're not gonna be wasting this stuff. Also, I really like the way that large nozzle diameters print. So, you know, every now and then just fire up some fat nozzle prints and you'll have a good time. One of the reasons why I've probably never had issues with clogged nozzles is because I store my filament in a sealed container, just like a big Tupperware box with a rubber gasket around the outside. Just throw all your filament in something like that. It'll help keep it somewhat dry and it'll also help keep the dust away. And that's gonna make sure your printers are running in optimal condition. 
One of the things that 3D printer manufacturers can do to prevent these types of issues is to have some sort of flow monitoring. And the Bamboo Lab X1C actually has this feature where it'll extrude some material and see how much is coming out. And that's a really good way to be able to tell if there's a partial nozzle clog causing increased back pressure and under extrusion. And when it detects that, it can automatically calibrate to push a little bit harder and faster on that filament to make sure that it is forced through the nozzle, even if it's slightly constricted. And that should help make sure that you get more consistent prints, even in non-optimal conditions. Another thing 3D printer manufacturers can implement is having some sort of encoder wheel on the filament as it's being fed in. If there's increased back pressure, that's going to cause slipping in the extruder. Now, slipping and skipping steps sound kind of similar, but skipped steps are somewhat easy to detect. You'll hear the extruder grinding filament or making a popping noise as it's trying to push through the filament. However, slipping is a little bit more difficult to detect. The idea with slipping is basically you're driving the filament, but due to the increased back pressure, the actual drive wheels are rotating, let's say it rotates 100 rotations, and you should be able to calculate that that extrudes this amount of filament through the machine. When you have increased back pressure, that's going to cause some slip of the wheel. Basically, you're turning the wheel faster than it's feeding the filament through. And this is a concept that's really familiar to automotive engineers. If you're designing a car, let's say it's a drag racer or something, the wheels are always spinning faster than the calculated speed of the vehicle. So what shows up on your odometer is calculated by how fast the wheel is turning. However, the wheels will always be spinning and slipping a little bit to get optimal grip. So, you know, uh, that's something that's a little more advanced and in the realm of engineering, but suffice to say that the number of turns that the wheel makes doesn't exactly translate one-to-one -to, -one to how much filament comes out. With increased back pressure, you're going to have a little bit of slipping and you're going to be extruding a reduced fraction of the filament that you're expecting. It's the same concept with anti-lock braking or when you're going around a corner really fast and the car is sliding a little bit out of track. You need a little bit of slip to get the maximum grip. And when you get increased back pressure in the hot end, it's going to cause a little bit of slipping so that it can produce enough force to push through that back pressure. It's kind of uh, esoteric and maybe I can do a future deep dive into that concept in a future video. But yeah, that's the basic concept. So that just goes to show that although my shop looks dirty, it's actually quite clean in terms of the air quality and the amount of dust in it. I have my tools all over the place, but if you have something like a HEPA filter that's helping draw particulate matter out of the air, that should help prevent these types of clogs, in addition to the other air quality benefits that it'll have. So it'll help get rid of those ultrafine particles that 3D printers can emit, and also improve your print reliability, which is something I never thought it would do. So thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots, and uh, make sure to wash your filament. Keep it clean and keep your 3D printers running. All right, I'll see you in the next episode.